Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Good day to all of us. Ako po si Deborah Garcia and welcome to another series of lessons where you will learn not just the theories and form of the language but also the function and the usage. But before you watch this video, please make sure that you've already watched the previous series with 18 lessons in it. I put the link of the first lesson in the description box below because in that series, I discussed all the major theories that would help you understand the Filipino language from the very basic to the advanced level. So if you're ready, grab your pen and paper and let us learn all about conversational Filipino. In today's lesson, we are going to learn how to conjugate a mag verb in its future, present, past, and of course, in its imperative form. And also, we are going to see how the verb changes when the focus of the sentence shifts from the subject to the object. The sample conversation that I prepared for you today is a voice message. So the topic for today is leaving a voicemail or in Filipino, it's pag iiwan ng voicemail. As you can see, the terminology voicemail is retained because we don't have a direct translation for that. So we retain the term voicemail. Pag iiwan is leaving, leaving a voicemail. Root verb here is iwan. It means to leave something or to leave someone why did i separate these because the verb changes when you are talking about leaving something and when you are leaving someone i'm going to show you later good morning si debra po ito may appointment po ako kay dr gomez sa friday 3 p.m pero hindi po ako makakapunta dahil may ubo at sipon po ako pwede po bang magparibok para sa friday next week Pakitawagan po ako sa 204-111-2233. Salamat po. And this is the transcript of the voicemail earlier. I don't think it's very complicated. The message is short. And I know you're very familiar on how to leave a voicemail when you are canceling your appointment with the doctor. So this is when you leave a message. Of course, you greet. Good morning. And then you introduce yourself. Si Debra po ito. Ito is this. So, good morning. This is Debra. And of course, because this is a formal message, you're leaving it to uh, for the doctor. Then you always use po. As you can see, there are a lot of po here. Po and here and here, here and everywhere. So, we want to be polite because we are leaving a message for a professional. And also, when you leave a message for a stranger, for example, or for your boss, you always want to be professional. So, you want to be polite, not professional actually, but polite. So, po, you use po. So, good morning. This is Debra. My appointment po ako. I have, my is have. I have an appointment for Dr. Gomez. I have an appointment for Dr. Gomez when... She said, Friday, 3 p.m. Pero, what's pero again? But. But, hindi, it's a negative one. It's no, no or not. So, but, I cannot, cannot. I cannot makakapunta. Root verb is punta. I cannot go. Or I cannot make it. Punta is go. To go somewhere. So, dahil is because. Because. My again, have, right? Have, I have. Ubo is ka. Sipon is cold, okay? Ako. I have cough and colds. I have cough and colds. Puede. So we, we studied, we, we encountered this word so many times. Puede po ba? You're asking now. Puede is can. Can I? Rebook. Can I rebook? Can I rebook it? Magpa. Uh, you can also put uh, a dash in between. Magpa rebook. is It's uh, an English word that is made into a Filipino terminology by adding this one. Magpa. So can I rebook? Pwede po ba magpa rebook? When? When do I want it? Para for... Friday next week. So, pwede po ba magparibook para sa Friday next week? 
Can I rebook it for Friday next week? Pakitawagan. Look at this verb. The root verb is tawag and then we added this one. And pakitawagan. Um, this one is actually, it's, a, it's an imperative form. You, you say paki is please. Please call me. Now the focus of the sentence here is me. Not the doer, not the someone I am asking to call me, but it's um, it's me as the object. So who is he gonna call me? So I am the folk. I the the object is the focus. So that's why the conjugation of the verb is like this. If this is an actor focus verb or the doer of the action is the focus, I would use the um as an infix. So a future would be. Tatawag, present is tumatawag, past tense tumawag, and then imperative form tumawag. So it's the same with the, with the um, right? If the focus of the sentence is the subject. But this one, the focus is the object. So we conjugate it like this. Paki is please. Pakitawagan po ako. And this is my number. And I said, salamat po. So I made a table here so we can clearly see the transformation or the conjugation of the verbs from future, present, past, and imperative. And also on this side, the focus of the sentence, if it is the subject or the doer of the action is the focus. And if the focus is the object, then as I told you earlier, we have two kinds of object here. There's the something and there's the someone. So... As I said earlier, our root verb here is E1, to leave something or to leave someone. So this is for something and this one, this line here is when you leave someone. So let's look at the first focus. So if the focus of the sentence is the subject or the doer of the action, then the future tense of the verb E1 would be mag E1. So as I said, this is a mag verb. So you use mag the prefix mag to, to conjugate them. Future mag ee1 and we repeat the first syllable e so that's letter i ee1 mag ee1. Present the mag will change to nag and then it will be the same. Repeat the first syllable and include the, the root verb so nag ee1 present. The past tense would still use nag but we don't repeat the first syllable anymore, so it'll become nag e1. The imperative form, the command form of the verb would be mag e1. So you use the mag again and then plus the root verb e1, mag e1. Now, in the second line, if the focus of the sentence is the object of the sentence, then we have one and two. We have the something and the someone. If you are leaving something, your future tense would be e e one. So we did not put the mag, no prefix mag. We just repeated the first syllable e or the letter i. So it'll become e e one. Present tense e ni e one. So where is our root verb here? E one, and then we repeated the first syllable e, and then we have a prefix in. So, ini e1. Look at the past tense. We still have our root verb e1, but we did not repeat the first syllable anymore. So, we just added the in, the prefix in, then it will become ini1. And of course, our imperative form, we do not add anything, no prefix. It's just the, the root verb e1. So, again, future ee1, present ini e1. Past tense, in E1, and the imperative form or the command form is E1, just the root verb. This is for something, when you are leaving something. Now, when you are going to leave someone, like your husband, <laughs> okay, this, uh, this will become the conjugation. So, we still have our root verb here. Where? It's here, E1. But what did we do? We repeated the first syllable, and then we add a suffix, an. There. So, future tense will become e e one e e one Focus is the object and it's the person that you're going to leave. e ni one oh, sorry, e e one Future. Look at the present. Where is our root verb? E-1. 
the present uh, form is ini iwanan, ini iwanan. What is, we repeated the first syllable, e. So, e1, 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 this, we added the prefix in, and we added the suffix an. Ini iwanan. That's the present, the past tense. Where is our root verb? It's here. And then we added the prefix in, and we added the suffix an. Then it will become ini wanan. And the imperative form is e1 plus the suffix an. It will become e wanan. So again, future e e wanan, present ini e wanan, past tense ini wanan, and the imperative form is e wanan. It looks complicated, I know. So don't worry, I'm gonna maybe I am going to flash the clear copy of the of the table so that you can use them as a reference. You can take a screenshot or whatever. So I hope you took a screenshot of the clear copy of the conjugation of the verb E1 because you are going to use that to analyze these sentences. All right, let's go to number one. Number one says, mag iiwan ako ng voicemail. Ako is I. Nang voicemail is just voicemail. So what is this? Mag iiwan is in what tense? As you can see, we use mag. We repeated the first syllable, I or E, and then we have our root verb E1. Mag iiwan is what the future tense of the verb e1 right mag e1 -e ako i will leave a voicemail mag e1 -e ako ng voicemail what is the focus of the sentence the focus is the doer of the action i so this is how you conjugate it in future tense look at number two mag e1 ka ng voicemail what happened to our verb e1 it's still here. We added mag. Just mag. We did not repeat the first syllable of the root verb e1. So what kind of verb is this? This is an imperative form of the verb. Imperative someone. So mag e1 ka. You leave a voicemail. So someone is commanding or telling me to leave a voicemail. Mag e1 is in the imperative form the focus is still the doer of the action now number two and number three of course these sentences have the object as the focus look at number two in the first sentence iniwan ko ang pera sa la mesa where is our root verb it's here e1 and then what did we do we added the prefix in so it became iniwan iniwan ko what is pera? Pera is money. La mesa is table. Sa is preposition. You know, in, in Filipino, as I told you in the previous lessons, our prepositions are not very specific. We don't have that in, on, at. We just use sa. What did I do? The money on the table. E1 is leave, right? What is the tense of the verb? Is this in the present? Future or past or imperative. It is in the past tense. Okay, so we added in and then E1. Ko is I. So I left the money on the table. I left the money on the table. It's in the past tense, but the focus of the sentence is not I as a doer of the action, but the money. The money is the focus here. Look at number two. Look at sen the second sentence under number two. E1 mo ang pera sa la mesa. It's the same, ang pera sa la mesa. But look at the verb, E1. Where is this located in your table? We just have this root verb. No prefix, no suffix. It's just E1. E1 mo ang pera sa la mesa. Mo is you. You leave the money on the table. E1 is an imperative form of the root verb E1, but the focus is 
the object para, not the doer of the action. Okay, is that clear? Now look at the last sentence here, last two sentences. So under number three, it says, Iniwanan ko ang asawa ko. Ang again, it's just the da, asawa. Asawa is a spouse. So it's either husband or wife. Ko is my spouse or my husband or my wife. So we say, Iniwanan ko ang asawa ko. Where is our root verb? Iwan. We added the in as the prefix. We added the an as the suffix. Where is this located in your table? Iniwanan is what? In the past tense. Iniwanan. Past tense and then asawa. So I, I left my spouse. Why did we use this kind of conjugation? Why not like this? This one is iniwan. This one's iniwanan. Why? Because the object is the focus and our object is not something but someone. So we conjugate it like this. So again, the doer of the action is not the focus but the object, spouse. Alright, this one, number three, the second sentence under number three is Iwanan mo ang asawa mo. Root verb, iwan, and then we just added the suffix an, no prefix in. So it's different. Iwanan mo ang asawa mo. This one is the imperative form of the verb iwan with the object as the focus. And that object is not something but someone. And that's all for today. I hope you learned something. And also I hope that you took down notes. Well, if you did not, then you can always repeat the video and then you would be able to familiarize yourself with the conjugation and everything. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. And also please don't forget to like this video. See you again next time. Bye.